I'll tell you why it was worth the four hours. <laughs> Sorry if that intro came off a little harsh. I'm just a little excited to be talking about some things that I've seen lately. Um, some of these I've seen kind of far back and I just never talked about them because I don't record these on a regular basis. Maybe I should start doing that. So I'm not going to talk about everything that I've watched <laughs> since the last time I did one of these videos. That's not really how these videos work. I just talk about stuff that I've seen that to me is relevant at that moment, basically. Some of this is going to be really brief. Um, I'll get into some other stuff more intensive based on the intro. You might know what that is. But anyway, here are some things that I've watched and I want to know, have you seen this? First thing that I want to start off with, <laughs> believe it or not, is the Tom and Jerry um, animated movie that came out on HBO Max and it might have been released in theaters. I don't know. I'm not doing theaters right now, so it's hard for me to remember which things are streaming releases and also theatrical releases. It's not important to me right now. The thing that I want to say about this Tom and Jerry movie is that I was, I feel like shocked is a strong word, but I think it's accurate. I was shocked by how not bad <laughs> this movie was. I know that that sounds funny. I'm not saying that it was like the greatest and that's not I'm not saying that at all. That I just want to be clear that this was actually a good kids movie. You know, like <laughs> I just I did not have high hopes for it. It was one of those things where I had some time on my hand, me and my husband were sitting there, we're talking about our nostalgia and you know how we used to love, you know, Tom and Jerry. And I think either in the 90s or early 2000s, I can't remember which one, they released the movie and Tom and Jerry talked in that movie and it was awful. I didn't even watch the whole movie because at that time I was really excited to see it. And once they started talking, I was like, I want my money back. <laughs> even though I don't think I paid to see it in a theater. Like, I don't, I don't know. That's beside the point. The point is, is they got it right with this one. I think this movie was a really great way of introducing this new generation that's not that familiar with Tom and Jerry, about Tom and Jerry, even though it was, you know, a, a live action animated movie, you know. So like I said, I was just shocked by how not bad it was. <laughs> so if you have any Tom and Jerry nostalgia and you have access to the HBO Max um, app, I would say check it out, you know. Um, it probably would be more enjoyable if you either have kids or you work with kids. If that's not the case, it's just going to be pure nostalgia. So if you didn't really love Tom and Jerry kids, I'm not going to recommend you sit down and watch this because <laughs> it's silly. So that out of the way, I think that was the only really, really like wholesome thing. On oh, no, no, no. Another thing that um, I've been watching, it's been on several seasons, so this obviously isn't new, and I've been watching it for a while, but I don't think I've ever mentioned it on this channel before, is that I am, I don't like to use the word obsessed. I feel like I get caught up in trendy word culture that people will say catchphrases and things all the time, and I'll just repeat them because that's what people do. I am not obsessed with this show but I do really enjoy it. It's one of those things that if I turn on my Pluto app and it's on, I'm just going to watch it, even if I've already seen the episode. And that's Tiny House Nation. <laughs> um, they have a whole Tiny House channel because there's other Tiny House shows. And I, I watch them all. Um, I don't enjoy them all as much, but I still I like the idea of the Tiny House. My home that I live in is not a tiny home, but it is a small home, and I feel like we're doing a lot with the little space that we have. What's the crazy thing about it is, in terms of square footage, the house that we moved into is actually, I want to say, 100, close to 100 square feet smaller than the townhouse that we lived in. But we have three bedrooms a game room, a den, a kitchen, a dining room, like square footage is not what it used to be. It's, it's not so much, you know, the square footage that you have, it's what you do with that space, the layout of the space. Clearly, the layout of the spacing in our townhouse 
townhouse was not optimal at all. Whereas in this house that we live in now, even though it's a small house, we can do so much with it. And just me going on this ramble is just saying how much I enjoy watching Tiny House Nation and other tiny house programming. And I get it. If that's not your thing, no big deal. I mean, I don't currently live in a tiny house. I don't see myself living in a tiny house, but I like the idea, you know. Um, so anyway, really enjoy watching that. So um, I would say the next thing that's close to being wholesome on the list <laughs> would be, um, and this, and again, this is something that I watched a while back. <laughs> My dog is tripping. I'll be right back. All right, crisis averted. Where was I? <laughs> yes, love, love tiny house nation. Next thing on the list, like I said, watch this was a while back. So this is just kind of a recap of how much I enjoyed the second season of The Mandalorian. Um, it's such a good show. Like it blows my mind that it's a Disney property. It's so good. Not that Disney isn't good. No, I mean, you know what I mean. Disney. Um, you know, people either love Disney or they hate Disney. I'm not that extremist. I'm in the middle. I can appreciate the things that I appreciate and the things that I don't, I don't, you know, I, whatever. But they have done, I feel, a really good job with this whole Star Wars thing. You know, it's not the exact same Star Wars that you grew up with. Get over it. But this Mandalorian show, yeah. So the surprise, you know, at the end of season two, um, I liked it, <clears throat> and I'm really excited about the, their, them continuing the story, perhaps with a different Mandalorian. That's what I was getting. So, yeah. So the other thing, um, of course, that I finished was WandaVision, and um, the Marvel MCU has just been amazing. <laughs> I mean, and I mean, it's... um. I think this is one of those shows that if you aren't into comic book movies, you could still appreciate this show. Now, granted, if someone is dead set against trying to look at something even remotely related to comic books, you're not going to be able to sell them on them because you're just not. Because some people are just stubborn like that. But I feel like this show would appeal to people who like X-Files. You know, like it's kind of on that level, you know, or maybe um, I can't remember what was the name of that show where it was like Eureka or Eerie or something like that. Like people who like those kind of quirky shows that are kind of outside of the box type shows that you don't really know what's going on until the very end will like this show without any reference to the Marvel MCU whatsoever. And the way the show is done, it, even if you don't know all the different characters, they explain stuff so that you can at least have, like, a reference. Like, you're not totally, completely um, you know, lost. Like, you don't have to know the name of this villain or that to, to be able to follow the show. So I feel like what they did with WandaVision was just really something special. Um, it's kind of like when you read a good, like, book series and then someone makes a spinoff from that series and it's like a standalone and you appreciate that standalone for what it is it doesn't affect the whole overall thing but it's like its own thing but it's still part of that other thing <laughs> okay i'm done so let's move on to the next thing um spinning off that i'm currently watching falcon and the winter soldier because it's releasing weekly i can't you know give you my final thoughts on it but you know it's pretty good so far um yeah i can't wait to see where it goes I just hate the fact that it's releasing weekly. Don't understand why streaming services feel like they have to do weekly releases. I mean, isn't that the point of it not being network TV is that you can binge watch it? I mean, I thought that was I thought that was the whole point of the streaming services developing this binge culture. So why would you develop this binge culture and then tell someone that they have to wait a week to watch the next episode? It's not like these episodes aren't done already. You know what I mean? Like, this, it's done already. They're just releasing it one week at a time. And it's not like by doing that, they're ensuring that people are going to keep their subscriptions. Not really. That's not really how it works anymore. If people want to watch the series, they're going to watch the show. They're going to pay for the service, you know, whatever. Sorry for that rant. I'm just waiting for the next episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier. 
<laughs> um, so let's see. Another thing that I am watching, this came out, I think, a while back, and I've been wanting to get into it for a while. I didn't really fully understand what it was, but now that I'm into it, I'm kind of mixed, and that is lower. And I think that's an Amazon Prime thing. Um, and the thing with lore is I think it's going to really appeal to people who like um, crime dramas or true crime fiction, like, or not true crime, <laughs> true crime, like mysteries and stuff. And like, it, it definitely appeals to those people, but also people who are into like paranormal mysteries and the supernatural, things like that, because it basically talks about all of these supernatural superstitions and the lore that people believed um being acted out like in the real world saying it wasn't really the witch who killed the guy it was just the jealous wife or it wasn't you know some demon that stole that baby they got rid of their baby you know like so so from that aspect it's very intriguing but it's also very disturbing just to see how twisted people are that i mean human beings are horrible <laughs> so this isn't a show, I mean, this, I just went on my binge watching rant and I'm going to talk about now how this is not a show that I can binge watch. I do like it because I do learn some things about, you know, the origins of things and lore and all that kind of stuff and getting into the mysteries of things, but it's just not something that I can just sit down and just watch. I just can't. So I watch like one episode at a time, do something else, you know, but I, I do like that it's there for me to um, get into. It's it's interesting. So that's another something to look into if you um, want to know that. Um, let's see. Let, let's head over to Netflix for a bit. I am currently watching The Amend um, miniseries. I think I have one more episode. So I am pretty much getting to the end of that. And this whole series is get a deep dive into the 14th amendment and how it affects America specifically um, the establishment of um, oppression um, that's built into the nation that the 14th amendment, amendment was supposed to help eradicate and so it's basically talking about how established establishments within our nation have been constantly fighting against an amendment that's in our constitution to limit the rights of other people, mostly um, to limit the rights of black people. But I mean, think about it. If someone's going to limit the rights of one group of people, they're not going to stop there. <laughs> they're going to limit them to, you know, other people of color and women and people with disabilities and all this kind of stuff. And so basically, I think it's one of those series that um, I'm glad that I have Netflix and that I can watch it, but I really feel like something like this would be even more beneficial if it was just like free to the world, if it was on like public access. Like this programming is something that kids in America need to be taught in school because no one's going to teach it to them in school. And it says that even in the program that the reason why most people don't understand the significance of the 14th Amendment is because people in power with, with money don't want people to know about the 14th Amendment. So anyway, I'm going to finish that probably tomorrow. And, you know, there's other eye-opening programs like that. I mean, things, I mean, I'm not going to go down the list of all the programs that are out there on streaming networks and you know, stuff talking about the injustices within this country. I mean, you've probably seen more of them than I have, but I'm just saying this is the one that I'm watching right now. This is the one that I actually feel like should be taught in schools. Not that none of these other ones should be, but some of, you know, sometimes when you're watching these programs and they're shocking and they're horrifying and it's all real, you realize that, you know, okay, so this is for an adult audience or this is targeting this or this is targeting that. Like this 14th Amendment stuff, I mean, yeah, it, sh it, it should be, it should have a whole month. You know, if we're if we going to have, you know, our, our measly Black History Month to remind people of the contributions of Black people in this country, which we need to have more actually, like, recognized months for, like, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, all that stuff, because we shouldn't have to have those things, but clearly... We have to have them until things 
change, but let me hone this in, you know, ring, real, whatever, let me bring it in to say that um, there should be a whole month dedicated to the celebration of the 14th Amendment. All right, um, still on Netflix, I did watch and finish Bridgerton. Everybody was losing their freaking minds over Bridgerton. Um, I didn't dislike it. I mean, I liked it. I mean, I don't, I mean, <laughs> it was one of those things where I told my husband that it was kind of like watching a Lifetime movie, only with powdered wigs. <laughs> so um, if you love Lifetime movies, then you will absolutely love it. But beyond that, it was really, it was a good show. Um, it, it kind of, um, I, I was mostly intrigued by the multicultural aspect of it. Um, the idea that um, the depiction of the um, queen is based on a real person. And of course, you know, the this, this idea of this alternate reality where this person um, was able to influence and so black people were given like land and deeds and all this kind of stuff and they live in this society. But um, besides that, I mean, it's just, it's a lot of drama. <laughs> a lot of drama more more drama than i'm used to but i i recommend it to anyone i mean really if, if you especially if you like like doubt nabby if you if you like lifetime movies you know um but even even if you don't like those things um i still think that it's worth watching just to see this depiction of a society of black people and white people next to each other in a time where that just wasn't going to happen the time period that this is taking place, black people were slaves. Okay, so sorry about the pause there. Yeah, um, you know, people will say, well, you know, this was happening in England and there wasn't slavery in England at the time, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to say one thing about the um, abolishment of slavery in England. Do what you want with it. Um, Slave owners in England only agreed to abolish slavery because they were paid reparations. Yeah, they were paid for money that they lost by freeing the slaves. So, moving on. Going back to my original thing that I started this whole thing with, the Schneider Cut of the Justice League. So, the original Justice League release, um, there was two kind of points of view on that. Loved it or hated it. I didn't love it, but I also didn't hate it. I liked it. I didn't think it was as horrible as some people made it out to be. Um, I will say that, I mean, you couldn't help but compare it to a Marvel release at the same time. In my opinion, DC has never had strong theatrical releases for their stories outside of the Batman franchise. I don't know what it is, but for decades, centuries, whatever, DC has just never been able to make really good live action depictions of their superheroes outside of, when I mean, consistently outside of the Batman franchise. Now, some of the original Superman movies, um, you know, from like the 70s, 80s weren't that bad, but each time they came out with one, it just declined, you know. So consistently, um, the good DC properties had been solely within that um, Batman franchise. So this was, you know, the first time kind of the the mass population was kind of being introduced into this idea of the Justice League, which we know as comic book fans, and we think it's been around, you know, much longer than that. And so for a lot of people, it was disappointing. You know, it kind of lacked a little, you know, something. Um, again, from my point of view, for a DC movie at that time, I was like, hey, it could have been way worse. <laughs> you know, so I didn't hate it. But watching the Snyder Cut, so my husband and I had decided that we were going to watch it in two settings. We, we, we went in ahead of time. We had made the plans, made the arrangements. We're going to watch two hours of it now and two hours of it later. But once we started watching it, we could not stop. So, totally worth the four hours. I just, comparing this movie to, they're two completely different movies. If you've been avoiding it because of the first movie, stop. 
that just 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 stop it. <laughs> it's a completely different movie. It is worth four hours of your time, whether you do that in increments or all at once. Check out the Snyder Cut. I have not seen the new Godzilla and Kong movie yet. Hopefully, gonna watch that tonight and uh, record one of these soon. All right. So you guys stay safe. Let me know what you've seen, what you're watching, what do you think about some of the things that I watched. And uh, all right then. Bye bye.